Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm going to go over an app called iReal Pro. Really good app uh, to practice to, uh, to improvise over chord changes, bass lines, uh, any kind of improvisation thing. Uh, part one is going to be the basics so you can get up and running. Part two is going to get into editing and um, you know sharing files and things like that. Uh, one note to uh, PC users, this is really only made for Mac right now, but there is an emulator plugin you can use that I read online about. So you can download that and probably use it with your uh, PC computer as well. Okay, anyway, uh, Happy New Year, guys, and uh, I'll see you soon. Okay guys, let's look at this great app called iReal Pro. It basically allows you to play songs, backing tracks. So you can practice improvisation, you can practice, um, you know, just playing the chords or, or walking bass or taking a solo over the changes. So it's really, really helpful if you don't have access to playing with a band all the time. Uh, it's not better than playing with a band because this is pretty static and you know, in fact, the walking bass lines that are kind of programmed in here <laughs> are, are pretty bad. You know, they, they kind of do all the things you don't want to do in a walking bass. They kind of repeat the same note. And they're just basically juggling the, the arpeggio of the chord, which is not what, what you do when you do a walking bass. You kind of want to add some passing tones in there to add some color and tension. Um, but in, anyway, this is probably the second best thing to actually playing with a human being. And um, I think it's really helpful. And... So the first thing you want to do is, uh, it's going to look kind of like, it's going to be completely bare. You're, you're not going to have any songs in here when you first download it. So hit this icon here, which is the form, and you'll go to quickly, down, main, uh, quickly download main playlists, and you'll hit that. And you'll grab something like this. Like I, I would get all of these, actually. Just take all of them, uh, one by one. So you're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to ask you if you want to open it up in iReal Pro. You allow that. Now, if you're only picking one song, you would find the song and then just grab that one song. But we want to grab the whole playlist, so we're going to push Import Playlist, and it'll bring the whole thing in. Now, in this case, it, it made another folder. I already have it here. I'm just going to delete that. And there we go. Okay, so now, when we look at this, here's all the songs that you have, and you can make subfolders and stuff like that. Um, and you can look at it in alphabetical order or by style or by composer. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, let's pick something so we can actually work on it. So there's a Chick Corea tune called 500 Miles High. Um, let me show you how these things work here now. Uh, first off, uh, if you hit this font icon, it's basically, it, it, I think it comes um, standard default to this kind of font. I kind of like the, this looks like the real book to me and I'm just used to that. And if you guys don't know what a real book is, the real book was written years ago, and it's basically, you know, the the uh, pretty much the Bible of jazz tunes. There's a couple of real books out there, but the very first ones, you know, there was under the table. You'd buy it. It was illegal. You know, it wasn't copywritten. Um, I think it was written by a couple of guys at Berkeley. You know, back in the either late '60s, or early '70s. Uh, but every, everyone that's studied jazz has seen a real book, or at least owns one, or owns a couple of them. I've owned a couple because, you know, over the years, they just turn into real book vapor, basically. They just break down, and uh, you need, end up having to buy another one <laughs> after a while. Uh, but in any case, here we go. So that kind of looks like that. Now, there's other ways to look at it. You could look at it with the guitar cape, with the guitar chords like that, if you wanted to. And I don't really suggest that um, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm teaching bass, but still, I don't... You're getting stuck on one voice in there, and it's just a really stock voicing. It's not... It's not going to be anything, you know, in reality. It's just to get you going if you actually, you know, you just bought a guitar and you have no concept of, of guitar playing. It might help you a little bit. Uh, the piano thing is, is kind of cool as well. Um, it's a little, it's cool-er. 
because you have just stock voicings again, and they're very, very stock. You know, everything is super stock on there. No embellishments, no nines, nothing. You know, it's just straight up, um, no upper extensions. It's just the, the arpeggio, basically. So um, anyway, that's one thing you can do. Ukulele, okay, here we go. So I go, I'm going to use that font that I like. And now to play this song, this is how many times the song is going to repeat, you know, through the tune. And you can go super high on there. Um, I generally like to play on something for a while so I can really stretch and get past my, um, you know, comfortable things that I play, let's say. I try not to play with licks per se, but it takes a while sometimes when you, when you, you fall into sort of the older things maybe. And uh, if you can play for a while on something, you're going to do a lot better. Uh, but let's just go over the basic controls in this tutorial. So I'm not going to talk too much about impro improvisation just yet. That is coming in later videos. So right now we just want to learn this app so that you can practice along with the things that I show you. Um, and when you first push play here, um, you'll see it'll tell you how long that's going to be. It's like 13 minutes of the song, basically. Okay. This is um, the key. So it's originally in E, and if you hit this, it'll show you, uh, excuse me, E minor. It'll show you all the different keys, just in case, um, uh, you know, some of these tunes are vocal tunes, and you, you might have to change the key to be able to sing it in your key. Um, so that was that would be the reason for this right here. Or if you just want to practice in different keys just to become a better player, which is very common in the jazz world uh, to play songs in all 12 keys. Um, so anyway, and here's the tempo. And if you hold it down, it goes a lot faster, of course. Okay. And then this is the style. And this is kind of important, and we'll come back to this. Uh, now, here's your master volume. Here's the different instruments. So if I play this right now, uh, you'll hear Rhodes. If we can go to the piano. That's the organ. So these are um, kind of the basics here, and you have volume controls, of course. So if let's say if you're a bass player and you just want to practice making a bass line over this, you would just turn down the bass and, and keep on playing. And vice versa, if you're a guitar player or a piano player, you would just play the bass and drums. Uh, you can also switch the drums to just two and four, like for straight ahead playing, which we'll get into later. I'll show you some of that. This is the master reverb. This is on all the instruments. Um, if you do change something, let's say, you know, I have this and I have um, fretless bass and I do, uh, you know, click two and four over here, and, and you kind of hate it, let's just say. Maybe you just don't like that, and you're not really into it. Um, in that case, you would want to uh, go back to default instruments. If you hit that, it'll take you back to where it originally is at, the way it was programmed. I kind of like the road. I don't like the piano sound too much in this, so I kind of like the Rhodes one because it's... Um, it's kind of mellow. It almost sounds more like a pad. I really like that. Okay, uh, now this little thing here, embellished chords, I recommend this all the time if it's a jazz song. Probably not if it was like a, a rock pop thing. Uh, and I'll show you that in a, in a minute here. But let's just say, you you know, what, what it actually is doing is on this E minor 7, there's upper extensions that piano players use and guitar players use and bass players use that are not actually in the chord. You know, in this case, we have an E minor 7 chord, which so it's E natural, uh, G natural, uh, B natural, and D natural. So it's E, G, B, and D. Now, uh, a piano player wouldn't just stick to those four tones. You might play a 9 in there, might play an F sharp, might might play the, uh, the 4th or the 11th, which would be A natural. So if you have this this embellished chords clicked on, it will allow you to uh, embellish chords, which is really nice. I mean, so when it plays, it'll kind of give you more of what it's really going to be like. Uh, and that goes for any of these chords. Like it might be a A flat major seven chord here, but this will actually a piano player might play a thirteen on that, a nine on that, different things. So it's good to have. I'm mean, you know where I wouldn't put it is if it's if you go to let's say a blues Texas rock vibe, right? Okay. There, you kind of want it to stick to the same pattern because it's not going to, you're not going to go to all those other tones, probably not, uh, on, on some of this. So it sounds like this.
So, you know, uh, you know, use it for the jazz stuff, use it for the, any kind of Latin, anything where the piano player or the guitar player is kind of playing all the upper extensions and, and it's a good thing to have on. Uh, I don't, I don't want to get too much into this. I'll probably do another video part two, but this is, this is if you want to practice speeding up, <laughs> which you shouldn't want to practice. Let's not practice that. Uh, you want to have your time pretty good. And transposition, same thing. It'll change the key um, depending on, you know, um, every repeat, you know, how, how much you want it to change, you know, transpose. Same thing with this. It's just moving it BPMs. I don't want you to get into that. I want you to have a good sense of time on one tempo before we get into too crazy stuff there. Now, another great thing uh, about this is it has uh, chord diagrams, so, and chord scales as well. I don't agree with a lot of these scales. I probably wouldn't, um, you know, I would use Dorian for sure, but some of these are just, they're just giving you every possible uh, thing on here. Um, you know, um, we'll get into that more. Uh, but if you do get, like on this chord, the B flat major seven, um, B flat major scale, I, I would use a sharp 11 on there. And they do have them over here. Uh, pentatonic, um, like that, I would use a, a C major pentatonic over that chord. And they don't have that on here. So it's, it's, a, it's a, there's a lidding, which is good. Um, and when you play it, it'll, it'll start, it'll show you those changes. It'll show you those chord scales, excuse me. But it's not going to give you kind of the hip ones, unfortunately. Uh, so that's where I am with that. Um, I'd rather, um, you just kind of, uh, look on that once in a while. I wouldn't run it all the time. Uh, but if you need to, you can, you know, it's fine. Uh, let's keep on going here. The count in duration, I kind of like that at one measure because sometimes it'll do two measures if it's something fast and it kind of kind of irritates you after a while. Uh, but here's like a fast thing here. So sometimes on automatic, um, it'll give you like two measures. Not a deal breaker, but um, yeah, I just, I just like things the same. I like it, just get used to things. So one measure is good for me. Uh, now, how to use it is the program. Um, a couple things um, that really work well. You can, whenever you touch a chord, it'll start at that, at that section. But let's say you just want to work on one section. You want to just work on these these chords here or you're giving you a problem maybe. This 2-5, this this B into the A7 is giving you a problem. So maybe it's just, maybe it's just those three chords. So you can just practice that one thing, which is really nice. So when you push play now, it'll go endlessly. It will, it will go on forever, you know, theoretically. Uh, it'll just play these four chords that are shaded right here. So that's basically you're in loop mode there, if you think of it that way. You can change the tempo while it's actually playing. You can also type in the, the tempo if you want to do that, um, like that. Uh, so uh, it's pretty cool. Nice to slow stuff down if you need to practice it. And it'll stay in loop mode until you do something, like you push stop, and now it would start at the very beginning again. Um, Another thing to consider is um, the instrumentation will change <clears throat> depending on what you pick here. Like Texas Rock gives you a guitar and a percussive organ, and you can use one or the other, and you have all these guitar sounds in here now, okay? Um, but when you go to, let's say, the, the uh, default on this was Bossa Nova, well, it's just going to give you some kind of piano instrument, um, you know, vibraform, just, it's going to give you these options and you're not going to have a guitar option at all. Not a big deal, not a deal breaker, of course. Uh, so that's basically how to, to get around, um, the program, the coda. And like in this case, a lot of the codas will be at the very end of the song. Um, so wh wherever you have this, if you have this on 26 repeats, of course, it'll be on the 26th repeat. And if you have it on three, it'll be on the third repeat. Um, songs like Invitation, though, where the coda is part of the form, well, then it's going to, uh, every, every time it's going to take the repeat DCL coda and it's going to, 
um, there's no repeat here, sorry, DCL coda, which means go to the very top and then take the coda, and it'll jump down to the coda here. And it'll do that every single time on the form. So, um, you know, just look out for that. Uh, um, like on this song, I kind of, you know, I, this is one of those where it's half Latin, half swing generally, but not everybody plays it that way. So I kind of just like a medium up swing, which is really nice to uh, get a good vibe for it. And we'll get into all that. Uh, but today, is, this is just basically how to get around iReal Pro so that you know what's going on. And then over here, um, you know, when it's playing, I, I don't like to have all this information. I don't really need it. So I'm going to get rid of that. And it'll give you a smaller version down here. And I'm going to get rid of this uh, over here. And then you have the a little more real estate. And again, depending on the chart, um, let's go back to the other one. Um, excuse me, uh, 500 miles high. It's going to look a little wider maybe. So if we look at that, okay, so that's how that looks. Um, another thing to think about, uh, which I'll get into the second video, is you can edit these songs because sometimes, the the, sometimes the changes are not right, and that's not a good thing. So I'll get into that into part two. But right now, this is basically the basics. Um, I think I've covered everything just to get you going. Um, I will be putting up exercises that you will import into this program. So if you can get the program, get it. It's not too expensive. I think it's, I think it's like fourteen bucks or nine bucks or ten bucks, somewhere in that range. And you can put it on all your formats as well. So it's really, really helpful. I think. Okay. Uh, have fun with this, and I'll see you on part two. Take care. Mullet!